We're back at AWS reInvent 2021. You're watching theCUBE, and we're really excited to have Adam Williams on. He's the Senior Director of Engineering at Iron Mountain. Sam Shahakapur, who's the uh, Product Engineering of Vertical Solutions at Iron Mountain. Guys, great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, thank you. All right, Adam, we know Iron Mountain trucks, tapes. What's new? What's new? So we've developed a uh, SaaS platform for classifying, digitizing, classifying, and bringing out and unlocking the value of our customers' data and putting their data to work. Um, we've, the content services platform that we've developed goes together with an IDP that we call an intelligent document processing capability to do basic content management, but also to do data extraction and to increase workflow capabilities for our customers. Yeah, so I was kind of joking before, like Iron Mountain had the, the, the legacy business, of course, everybody's seen the trucks, but $4 billion company, $13 billion market cap, the stock's been on fire, the, you know, the pandemic obviously has been a tailwind for you guys, but, but Sam, if, if you had to describe it to like my mother, what's the sound bite that you'd give? Well, the sound, sound bite is, everyone knows, data is, is gold today, right? And we are sitting figuratively and literally on a mountain of data. And now we have the technology to take that data, partner with AWS, the heavy machinery, to convert that into value, into value that people can use to complete the human story of, of healthcare, of mortgage, finance. A lot of this sits in systems, but it also sits in paper. And we are bridging that paper to digital divide, the physical and digital divide, to create one story. Now this has been a journey for you guys. Um, I mean, I, I recall that when you kind of laid this vision out, a number of years ago, I think you made some acquisitions, and, and so maybe take us through that tra amazing transformation uh, that Iron Mountain has made, but help the audience understand that. Yeah, our transformation's really been going from the physical records management mm -hmm. that, are, that we've built our business around to evolving with our customers to be able to work with all of the digital documents and not just be a transportation and records management storage company, but to actually work with them to put their, their data to work, allowing them to be able to um, digitize uh, a lot of their content, but also to bring in already digitized content and rich media. You know, one of the problems that, that always existed, especially if you go back to, let me go my, back in my brain, you know, 2006, the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, which said that, you know, Emails could now be you know, evidence in a case, and everybody was like, oh, how do I, how do I find email? And so one of the real problems was classifying the information for retention policies. You didn't want, you know, the lawyers wanted to throw everything out after whatever, six or seven years. The business people wanted to keep everything forever. Neither of those strategies worked, so classification, and you couldn't do it manually. So, have you guys solved that problem? How do you solve that problem? Does machine intelligence help? You know, it used to be, oh, I'll use support vector machines, or math, or probabilistic latent semantic indexing, all kinds of funky stuff, and now we've got, we enter this cloud world. Have you guys been able to solve that problem, and how? So, our customers already have 20 plus years of retention rules and uh, guidelines that are built within our, our systems. Um, and we've helped them define those over the years. Mm -hmm. So we're able to take those records retention schedules that they have and then apply them to the documents. But instead of doing that manually, we're able to do that using our classification capabilities with AI ML. And that's SOM's expertise. Awesome, so lay it on me. How do you guys do that? It's a lot of math, but... Right. but it, it, well, yeah, so it's, it, it can get complicated real fast. But, uh, but at, at a simple level, what's changed really from support vector machines of 2006 to today is the scale at which we can do it, right? The scale at which we are bringing those technologies plus the latest technologies of deep learning, uh, you know, your, your conventional neural networks, going from a, a bag of characters and words to really the way humans look at it, you look at a document and you know this is an invoice or this is a prescription. You don't have to even know to read to know that. So machines are now capable of having that vision, the computer vision, to say prescription, invoice. So we can tra we train those models and have it, have them do it at industrial scale. Yeah, because humans are actually pretty bad 
at classifying at scale. You know? At scale, like yeah. they're back. Yeah, you remember yeah. we used to try to do, oh, let's we'll just tag it. Yep. Oh, oh God, yeah. what a nightmare. Yeah. And then when something changes, and so right. now right. machines and the cloud and, yeah. and yeah. it's changed that. How about, I mean, I presume highly regulated industries are the target, but maybe you could talk about the industry solutions a little bit. Right, right. So yeah, regulated industries are a challenge, right? Especially when you talk about black box methodologies like AI, where you don't know, okay, why does it classify this as this and that as that? Uh, but that's where I think a combined approach of what we are trying to say, composite AI. So the human knowledge plus AI knowledge combined together to say, okay, we know about these regulations, and hey AI, be cognizant of these regulations while you do our stuff, so don't go blindly. So, so you know, we, we, we keep the AI in the guard rail, uh, guardrails and guide it to, to be within those lines. And the other part of that is, we know our customers really well. We spend a lot of time with them. Yeah. And so now we're able to take a lot of the challenges they have and go meet those needs with the, the document classification but we also go beyond that, allowing them to implement their own workflows within the system, allowing them to be able to define their own capabilities and to be able to take those records into the future and to use our content management system as a true content services platform. Okay, take, take me to the before and the after. So the workflow used to be, I'd ring you up or maybe you come in every week, grab a box of your records, put them in the truck and then stick them in the, of the, the, the Iron Mountain. And that was the workflow, and you wanted them back, you go get them back, and it'd take a while. So you've digitized that whole, and, that, and when you say, I'm inferring that the customer can define their own workflow because it's now software defined, yeah. Yeah. right? So that, that's what you guys have engineered. Uh, tell us uh, <laughs> some serious engineering work. So, so uh, what's the tech behind that? Can you, can you paint a picture? Yeah. So the tech behind it is we run all of our cloud systems and Kubernetes. Um, so using Kubernetes, we can scale really, really large. Um, all of our capabilities are, are obviously cloud-based, which allows us to be able to scale rapidly. Um, with that, we run Elasticsearch as our search engine, and MongoDB is our NoSQL database. And that allows us to be able to run millions of documents per minute through our system. We have customers that we're doing eight million documents a day for, they were able to process. And they were able to do that with a known level of, of accuracy. And they can go look at the documents that have had any exceptions. And we can go back to, to what Sam was talking about, to go through and retrain models and re-label re documents so that we can catch that extra percentage and get it as close to 100% accuracy as, as, as we would like or they would like. So how, what happens, so take me through the customer experience. What is that like? I mean, do they still, I mean, this, yeah, so, well, you know the joke, right? The paperless uh, uh, bathroom will occur before the paperless office, right? So there's still <laughs> paper in the office. But, but so what, what's the workflow? I mean, I presume a lot of this is digitized at the office, but there's still paper, so, so help me understand that. Customers can take a couple different paths. One is that we already have the physical documents that they like us to scan. We call that back file scanning. So we already have the documents, they're in a box, they're in a record center. We can move them between different record centers and get them imaged in our high volume scanning operation centers. From there. Hey, sorry to interrupt. And at that point, you're auto classifying, right? It's yes. not already classified. I mean, it kind of no. is manually, but you're going to reclassify it on creation. Correct. That electronic we, document. For some of our customers, we have base metadata that gives us some clues as to what those documents may be. Right. Right. But for other documents, we're able to train the models to know if they're invoices or if they're contracts, yeah. commonly formatted documents. But customers can also bring in their already digitized content. They can bring in basic PDFs or Word documents or Google Docs, for instance, but yeah. they can also bring in rich media, such as video and audio. And from there, we also do uh, speech to text for video and audio, in addition to just basic OCR for our documents. So, public sector, financial services, healthcare, insurance, I got to imagine that, that those have got to be the, the, the yeah. sweet spots. Right, right. But Others? Starting uh, another yeah. sweet spot for us is, okay. is the federal space and public sector. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we achieved FedRAMP. Um, which is a major awesome. certification yeah. to be able to work with, with the federal government. Now how do you work with AWS? What's your relationship with them? How do you use the cloud? Maybe you could describe that a little bit. 
Well, yeah, yeah, at multiple levels, right? So, of course, we use their cloud infrastructure to run our comput computing because with the AI and machine learning, you need a lot of computing power, right? And AWS is the one who can reliably provide it, you know, space to uh, store the digital data, computing to process it, extract all the information, train our models, and then process these, like he's, he's talking about, we are, we are talking about eight, 12, 16 million documents a day, so now, now you need seconds and, and sub-second processing times, right? So, so at different levels, at the computing infrastructure level, also the AI and machine learning algorithms levels, you know, AWS has great, uh, like uh, Tesseract is one of the ones that everyone knows, but there is other uh, purpose-built uh, model APIs that we utilize, and then we build, we'll put, put our secret sauce on top of that to really, you know, to build that parfait up and, and, and make, it, make, it, make it really, you know, uh, compelling. And the secret <laughs> sauce is, obviously there's a workflow, and the flexibility of the workflow. There's the classification and the machine learning and, 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 and intelligence. There's a lot of engineering that makes right. the cloud work to yeah. your advantage. And, and what else is there? No, knowledge right. graphs, like what he was saying, right? The domain. So, so mortgage is not that uh, a document that looks very similar in mortgage versus uh, you know, uh, a bank state in mortgage and bank statement in uh, healthcare have different meanings. You're looking at different things. So, so you have something called a knowledge graph that maintains the knowledge of, of a person working in that field, uh, and then we, we, have, we have those created for different fields, and within those fields, different applications and use cases. Got it, yeah. so, so that's unique, and, and, and yeah, that's and powerful. That, that provides the ability to, to provide a hierarchy for our, our customers, so they can trace a document back to the original box that was given to us so many years ago. You got that provenance yep. and that and, lineage. Yep. Um, yep. I know you're not go to market guys, but conceptually, how do you price? Is it like, it's, a, it's SaaS, it's a, is it license, is it term, do I, is, it, is it consumption based, based on how much we I have, ingest? We have varying different pricing models. Um, so we, we first off, we're, we're in six major markets, um, from EU, Latin America, North America, and others that we serve. So within those markets, we offer different capabilities, we have an essentials offering on AWS that we've launched in the last two weeks that allows you to be able to bring in base content and that has a per object pricing. Uh, and then from there we go into our standard edition that has ability to bring in additional workflows and has some custom pricing. And then we have what we call the enterprise. And for enterprise, we look at the customer's problem, we look at custom AI and ML models you might be developing, and the solution that we're having to build for them, and we provide a custom price and capability for what they need. And then, didn't eight of us this week announce a new Glacier tier? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, you guys are all over that. Yep. Right? That's where you're using, right? Yep. The cheapest and the deepest, yep. right? And yeah. Uh, one of the major yeah. things that AWS provides us as well is the compliance capabilities for our customers. Yeah, right. So our customers really require us to have highly secure, highly trusted environments in the cloud. Um, and then the ability to do that with data sovereignty is really important. And so we're able to meet that with AWS as well. What do you do in situations where AWS might not have a region? Do you have to, you know, find your own data center to do that stuff? Or? Well, so data privacy laws can be really complex. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when you work with the customer, we can often find that the nearest data center in their region uh, works. Um, but we also do, we've explored uh, the ability to run cloud uh, capabilities within data centers within the region that allows us to be able to bridge that. Um, we also do have offerings where we can run on-premise, um, but obviously our focus here is on the cloud. Awesome business. Does Iron Mountain have any competitors? I mean, like... Yeah. Well, you know, we You don't found have to name them, but I mean, this is an awesome business. You've been around for a long time. Yeah, yeah. And we found that we have new competitors now okay. that we're in a new business. Yeah, um, they're, they're you know, trying to disrupt and, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Right. So you guys are transforming as an incumbent. Correct. You're the incumbent yep. disruptor. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, it's, it's self-disruption to some extent, right? Saying, hey, let's, let's, uh, let's broaden our horizon perspective offering value. But I think with the, the, the key thing is I, I'd, I'd uh, focus, want to focus more on the competitive advantage rather than the competitors is that we have the end-to-end -end flow, right, from the high volume scanning, operations, trucking, the physical world, then, then you know, up and above into the digital world, right? So you extract it, it's not just PDFs, and then you go into database, you know, machine learning, uh, unstructured to structured uh, extraction, and then over above that, value-added models, it's not just about classification, 
well, now that you have classified and you have all these documents, you have all this data, what can you glean from it? What can you learn about your customers, your, you know, the customer's customers, and, and provide them better services? So we are adding value all throughout this Get chain. And stack. I think we are the only yeah. ones that can do that full stack. That's the, that's the real yep. competitive advantage. Yep. Yep. Guys, really super exciting. Congratulations on, uh, on getting you. there. I know it's been a lot of hard work and engineering. And way to go, it's good. Thank we'll, you. It's fun, we'll, it's fun. Love to have you back. Thanks. Thank All you. right, and thank you for watching. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage.